Huh. The gecko and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's a, it's going to be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me, and uh, we'll see you there. Okay, so been fiddling with uh, getting the the neck lined up for the neck pocket, and uh, what I did was uh, I was doing it on the bench, and just didn't give me enough options once the body was over the bench to have good clamping, clamping back you know across here and here, and so with this an outrigger piece of a half inch piece of MDF here, uh, which is uh, clamped. And, and screwed to the bench and uh, I think before I get much farther along I'm going to put a, just a, a stick under here maybe just to help support that weight um, um, yeah it's moving a little bit so what I did was I, uh, I have the center line on the body as you can see and in here and marked uh, in the cavity and in the cavity on both sides of each cavity anyway so um, I got the center down I have a center line on the neck right here also and uh, so the deal is I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera when I'm grabbing stuff so I don't making you dizzy or or what but straight edge against the neck and then come back and measure from the straight edge to the center line on each side I've done that that's exactly 30 millimeters um, so I'm good this is centered I'm right straight through on the body centered um, I'm doing this time around is as you can maybe you can see maybe not the end of the neck is actually into the pickup cavity and that is because uh, when you route these things they're they just slide right in if you want a little tension on it uh, so I backed it up so that it'll route just a fuzz smaller because the neck is tapered so if I push the neck into the pickup cavity and set up my routing according to that then I should be pretty snug by the time I tap this back flush with the pickup cavity um, well I'm probably going to get some longer longer sticks here so these will go through the the joiner and be you know made very straight then I'm just too close to get a good overall they're going to go down either side and clamp on right with the neck in place and also with longer ones I can put them farther down the neck so I have a good parallel with the neck farther down but um, I have a slight um, a, a slight neck angle here this isn't a flat even though um, I'm using a tele type bridge I wanted a slight neck angle on this and so I, I set it up accordingly but this will drop down in um, right down to the top of the fretboard here just like a uh, a Gibson style guitar would do and because the Fender style guitar is generally about an eighth inch farther out of the pocket that's why they can go flat with the the tele style bridge so I needed a slight bit of neck angle to make up for the difference between that fretboard being right down to the top of the guitar uh, as opposed to what the fender typically does with it being out about another eighth of an inch so um, yeah somewhere in there and I my neck blank here right now is a little bit over an inch thick uh, without the uh, fretboard just the, the the main part of the neck itself and uh, if you look at a fender it's an inch overall and then they only go down they only go down uh, five eighths of an inch with their pocket. So, having said all that, that's the reason I have an angle. The other thing, um, 
that I normally do on these is uh, I usually run the neck itself into the back of the pickup cavity. Um, I opted not to do that this time around because I was going to end up with about an eighth of an inch of meat left on the bottom of the neck from the notch down for the pickup and out. Now on previous guitars that I haven't, you can see there's the recess under there to thin out the back of the body and because of that recess I can't push the neck as far into the body and consequently it'll do me no good to have that extra little tab hanging in there. So didn't do it. All right, so that's what I'm setting up here, and once I get everything uh, set up and clamped in, I'll bring you back. All right, I'm back. This takes a bit of setup, but this is a, a jig that uh, I think the first time I saw one, like I was thinking about something like this, and I saw a guy named Fletcher, an Aussie, doing a... Uh, using a jig similar to this or if not exactly like it I'm not sure I just saw the concept and then designed my own it's basically a sled uh, with you know with ends on it the guitar sits down into it I don't have it bolted down or anything at this point and uh, give you an idea I have used this uh, in the past and uh, had okay results um, I've done neck throughs and uh, I think I did a telecaster that I used just the regular I have a template for Telecasters and I just used it for the neck pocket. Um, I also, where did I put that? Oh, I also made this a one for one guitar that I just uh, clamped it down on top of the, kind of get an idea, clamped it down on top and used it as the pickup route. Um, the most problem, the most problem I had before with this was that I should have should have raised the guitar up because I had to have by the time I got the angle because uh, you adjust this up or down this is what those little quarter inch shims are for here you adjust adjust up or down to get your neck angle since this is a pretty slight neck angle um, right in there with just raising that end up a quarter inch um, before the guitar is all the way on the bottom of the sled here or the whatever you want to call this thing and um, you know, I had to use a really long router bit, and it was a half inch router bit in my 690 uh, Porter cable, and it just didn't feel real state, uh, stable, so I just wasn't feeling real good about it. It did fine. Uh, in fact, that's my guitar. So first, the guitar I play all the time uh, with the P90s in it, and that's probably what that's what it looks like those routes are for, and that. So. It, must have made that for that guitar as well. So, um, let me see. Stop rambling and get my uh, my thoughts together. So the first and most uh, critical thing is that there's good center lines uh, on the jig and that they go all the way through and that everything when you set up everything gets centered well. Uh, my straight edge and I clamp, clamp to this edge so it can't move on center and then get the back edge on center. Anyway, so the guitar gets centered up in the in the jig and then gets clamped down well. And then these guys go on and I just ran these through my joiner to straighten up the edges uh, and the faces. I ran all four sides, two sides and two faces. So those, uh, those get adjusted for the neck which is what I'm going to do now and I can't do it with one hand. And uh, but you get that all set up and then the router will just I'll put a stop uh, here too where I want the router you can see I have holes where I mounted the stop before for the router the neck pocket to stop and so once that's all set up I'll route that out I might bring you back looks like I'm running out of time on my card here okay so this is after the route uh, you can see down of the cavity there. Actually, when I had my neck, when I set it up, a little tiny line right here. Well, let's see back here. See the long line right there is uh, where it was at one point. I moved it forward 
So that little tiny line down there is the is where I set the end of the neck and that is actually behind the pickup cavity a little bit. Where am I at? There we go. Behind the pickup cavity a little bit. Um, the, the edge of the router bit actually trimmed a little bit of this off so it's going to be bigger than I want it. Maybe not terribly but somewhat. We'll see. All right, so test fitting the neck, and uh, apparently I'm still I'm about a 30 second into the pickup cavity still, and it's it's very back up. It's very snug. You can see it's holding there pretty good. If you pick up on the front, it pulls up a little bit, so it's not quite as tight in the front as it is the back. That's because over on this edge, it's going. I should turn this around. Over on this edge going to be you know radius you know into the neck right here this is going to be gone and then probably not exactly sure what I'm going to do here but I'm leaving myself some options I may roll this corner off um, may round it up into the neck even don't know for sure what I'm going to do there uh, this will all be you know rounded off and smoothed up and this this dish out in the back will get um, yeah, maybe even, yeah, I can't get much deeper, but it's going to have very, uh, get my hand around this thing. Oh, you get to see the mess that my bench is in the middle of a frenzy. Um, so this is going to have good, good neck access here. So it's hard to film and get far enough away to see what's going on here. But anyway, so that's where it's at. The neck's in there. It stays in there pretty well. Um, you know, so I'm I'm fine with that. And plus, it's got to go, it's got to go that way at 30 second yet. So, the time I, I get a, do a little more sanding on the side of the neck, I did already sand the side of the neck so that I I wouldn't, you know, I had that option of sanding. I don't want to lose a lot of width here, but I had the option of sanding that down. So you get an idea of what this thing is going to look like. I really like this Bolivian rosewood. Very nice. Yep. Alrighty. Well, uh, the next thing to do here will be uh, figure out what inlay I'm going to use. Get that in. Radius the board. Uh, if I if I do an edge inlay, I'll radius the board first, and then inlay so that I I don't sand it all off with the radius. Uh, but if it's just going to be down the middle. Uh, and then I'll do that before I do any kind of radiusing. And uh, again, I still haven't quite figured out what's happening up here with the headstock. So, later.